So this is the last actual, this is the last one in this series of going through promises that our Lord, our Saviour has given to us. Mainly, like I said, we've been in the New Testament, we've had, uh, but today we're going to be in the Old Testament and we're going to be looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. And so if you want to find that, it's going to come up on the screen, but we're going to read this. And this is a, this is a promise that our God gives us, our Saviour gives us, that actually also comes with it. If we do this, I will do that. And um, it, it's an amazing passage. So uh, I, I just want to want to read it to you. And we're going to look in actually the reason why this is the last one is because uh, next week we're going to have a double bill of testimonies. And the week after that is Easter Sunday, and we're going to be in person. Hopefully, that's for good. That's for it. That that you know, before this, before 2020, we didn't talk about church being in person or not in person. We just talked about being with the church, going to a place where the church was, you know, meeting with the church. We didn't talk about in person church, not in person church. Actually, no. So hopefully, from from Easter Sunday, even though we will put stuff online, we will use use on, online um, content. Um, actually, we hope that the vast majority of the stuff that we do will be with the people gathered in the same room. And hopefully that will be not just in halls, but that will be in our homes. And as the restrictions lessen uh, towards uh, as, as the year goes on, that will be in our gardens and in our homes. And we'll be able to do small groups together like that. But today we're going to look at uh, 2 Chronicles and in 2 Chronicles 7.14 it says, it says, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And so as we look at this, I've got, I've got three questions really. I just want to put that out for you. Firstly is, are you, hum are you humble? Are you humble? And what I don't mean by that is, do you think lowly of yourself? Do you think like everyone's better than you or whatever? Actually, because that's not what being humble means. Being humble means having sober judgment of yourself. You know, do you do you think rightly of yourself? And ultimately, that mean that can mean that when someone says you hurt me, or you upset me, or or you, I think you did this wrong. We 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 can go actually. No, I'm not perfect, and let's see if I did make a mistake there, and let's see what I can learn from. Let's see what I can grow from that. Not no no no. You are wrong. Because I don't make mistakes. Because I am perfect. No, no. Being humble means you realise that. I'm sure we all know someone who's like that. But anyway, um, moving move on. But, but, but in this in this passage, what it actually is talking about, what it's actually talking about, is that we, we realise that we are not God. We are not God, and we can't do life on my own. I, I saw a clip which is quite that lots of people have done uh, on Instagram, which basically the question comes out there is, um, do I need Jesus to be saved? Do I need Jesus to go to heaven? And the response back is, isn't yes, it's you need Jesus to go to Walmart. You know, you need Jesus to go to the shops. You need Jesus to live every single day of our life. And that's what we need to realise. We don't just, it's not just a case that, that, oh, I need saving. I need saving for my sins. Oh, Jesus, save me. Ah, oh, then it's fine. I can just go and do a life. No, no, we need Jesus to do every single mundane task of our day. We need him. And being humble it is, is a sense we realise that we're not perfect and we need Jesus for everything. Do you, do you realise? Do you get that? Do you get that? Number two, okay, are you seeking him? Are you seeking God, therefore? Kind of be, being humble kind of leads us to we need God and we're going to seek him for all we got, all we've got. Are we seeking him? Are we seeking his face, not just not just on, on a on a on a on a Sunday or or a special day of week or special time of the year, but every day we're we coming before God and saying, Jesus, I need you. Meet with me. Lord God, give, give meet my needs. God, I'm gonna, I want you, I want you more than anything else. And finally, see, are we practicing this sense of dying to ourselves? This is what the New Testament calls it, dying to ourselves. So here in this passage, it talks about, talks about turning from our wicked ways. And that's, that's the, the, the New Testament writers would say, are we dying to ourselves? Are we saying, as Jesus perfectly described, he said, you know, not my will, but your will be done. You know, I'd rather not go and die on a cross for everyone's sins. But you know what? What you want, God, not what I want. So are we doing that? Are we humble? Are we seeking him? And are we saying, God, whatever you want, not what I want. I'm going to be, I'm going to be faithful to you and you alone. And what he says is, what God says is, what his promise is, is when we do that, when we're humble, when we seek his face, when we die to ourselves, he says he will move. He will hear our prayers. He will heal the land. He will forgive our sins. That, that doesn't mean that if, if we fail, when we when we mess up, that God decides to plug his ears up and not hear us and, and just give us over to our sinful nature. No, no, no. But in but he says that when we do that, he promises that he will hear and 
act. And I don't know about you, I want God to act. I want him to act. I want him to act. And, and that's why, actually, so on Easter Sunday, we're going to be we're going to be starting our in-person Sunday uh, services again, where we're going to worship, we're going to pray, we're going to hear from the Bible, we're going to be in the same room with one another. We're not yet going to be able to hug each other and and and, and uh, uh, be fully um, uh, the community of God that we want to be, but it's going to be a start. But until then, and beyond then, actually, what we're going to do, um, really, probably until we can meet in homes again, is we're going to we're going to ma- gather the church. And you are invited, whether you're part of this church or not, you're invited to, to come come 7.30 Wednesday, every Wednesday. We're going to pray and we're going to worship God in a COVID safe way. We are going to pray and we're going to worship God and we're going to call on him. We're going to call on him to, to, to we're going to seek his face and we're going to call on him to come heal this land. You know, th- this, this year, if you were to ask me, probably May, April time last year, you know, I was hearing preachers, I was hearing people who I respect kind of talk and pray about God's kind of slammed the handbrake on. He's kind of uh, taken us to this place where we've had to stop and all the stuff of church, he's he, he's kind of just, he, he's got rid of so that we can have a reset, we can have a rethink, we can decide, we can, we can see actually and listen to God what he really wants for, for our, for our, our for our time and uh, so I remember hearing someone say that you know every kind of 500 years or so you know and you look back on the church history that is pretty much it that God kind of grabs hold of the world and gives it a good shake and he's shaking his church and, and, and he's shaking out the dross and stuff that's kind of just the the, the the doing church stuff and leaving actually this is what it means to be the church and and I was like yes amen but I don't quite get what that means for us in Blackpool but actually over the last few months really we, we've had as we've had prophecies or, uh, after prophecy of, of of from like Isaiah 43 of I'm God and I'm doing a new thing I'm going to make a way through the wilderness I'm going to make water in in the in the desert and, you know as we've had words like you know, I, 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 I've, I've, I'm like a forest fire. I've, I've burnt up. I've shaken, shaken up. You know, I, 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 I've stripped back, but I've stirred you up. I've stirred you up, and, and I'm doing something new. And, and out of the ashes, new shoots are gonna grow, like, like a tree. And I work prophetic word about a tree that's been 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 pruned back, and actually the, the 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 next spring, actually you look at that tree and it's bigger and grander and greater than it was ever before. It was pruned back, but it, the the growing was in the pruning, and that's what God has been doing. And that's what He's He's doing. And actually, I feel like now, rather than being frustrated that we can't do church how we want to do it, I can't do life how I want to do it, and I hope you get get this as well. Rather than being frustrated, I feel like from this in between time, this transition time of not quite how we want to to one day hopefully being able to do church exactly how we want to, being life, doing life, you know, eating around each other's tables, um, uh, 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 hugging one another, you know, being able to, to talk um, within a metre of each other without a mask on, you know, those just, just simple things that we can do, or that we want to be able to do and just, just love one another and be there with one another. Um, in, in between, I feel like with the church, I feel like what God is doing is rather than making us frustrated, rather than making us angry, he, he's, 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 he's making us like an elastic band that's being pulled back and and. and during this during this transition time that this this pulling back is creating greater and greater tension greater and greater force till that that day when we can actually do church exactly how we want to do it boom he releases that elastic band he releases the church so that we go with his full force the full power of the holy spirit into our town into our into our neighborhoods to our friends to our neighbors and actually he will he will sweep his holy spirit across this land bringing the newness, bringing the new life, bringing the water in the desert, in the barren, dry place. So we're going to pray for that. We're going to pray for that week in, week out. And I'm really excited to do that. I'm really excited to, to worship and pray in the same room uh, as, as my brothers and sisters for that to happen. But but until then, I'm going to ask you this week, why aren't you thirsty? Let's pray. Let's pray, ser- pray and ask God to search you, to search you and ask him to root out any pride. Anything that says, you know, Anyone who challenges me, they're wrong because I'm always right. Anything that, 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 that says, you know, I don't need God, I don't need anyone else. For him to root that out and us to realise actually we need God, we need Jesus, we need Jesus to go to Walmart. No, well, we don't go to Walmart, to Asda or where, Aldi, wherever you go. You know, secondly, that we would be a people who are thirsty. We'd be thirsty for him. Like, like in a dry and weary land where there is no water, our souls would, would yearn, would thirst for him. And as we thirst for him, he would meet our needs. 
And finally, as we do that, we would, thirdly, we would, we would ask for him to bring new life to this town. That we would be like a tree that's been pruned back. And as the, as the, as the, we go into the 2020, 2022, as we look back on the years, we say, God cut us back during 2020 in the beginning parts of 21. And now we are, his kingdom is greater and stronger and bigger than it ever was before. So I'm going to pray and I pray that you would join me and I would, and we would see you over the next coming Wednesdays. Uh, book it in your diary. Uh, you can book in online. Unfortunately, we need to do that kind of stuff so we can keep in our numbers. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see you Wednesday. I'd love to see you uh, at our service uh, on Easter Sunday and the following Sundays after that. So let's pray and yeah, I will hopefully I'll see you soon. So Lord Jesus, I pray God that you'd search me. Search my friends listening to this right now, God. And I pray that, that where there's any pride, where there's any sense of self-righteousness, where there's any sense of I can do this on my own. God, I can't. I can't. We can't. God, it doesn't matter how fit, well, healthy we are, Lord Jesus. We still can't do it on our own. Lord Jesus, I pray God that you would give us humble hearts. Lord Jesus, and I pray, God, that we would give you our, we would give, you'd make us thirsty. You'd give us spirits. You'd give us souls that are thirsty for you, God. Thirsty for you, Lord God, and that you would quench that thirst. And Lord Jesus, as we turn to you, as we pray, as we spend time in the next few weeks, God, praying for you to move, praying for you to come. God, I, I ask you, I ask you, come. Bring that new life, God. I thank you for the new shoots that we've already started in the, it, it, just, just in the last few months um, of, of, of this year, God. I, I thank you for the new shoots, Lord God, and I pray for more new shoots, more new shoots, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord God, bring it. Do a new thing in this town like you have promised, Lord God. And may you bring salvation and heart after heart turning to you. Amen.